What's up, you guys? This is Devin from Century Effect Studios, and we're back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about local versus global adjustments in Lightroom, Photoshop, or any editor that you're using for pictures. All right, now that you have your image in Photoshop, we're going to start from here. I'm using Lightroom and Photoshop, which is probably some of the most popular photo editing softwares that you have. For, so Adobe is rolling with me right now. <laughs> So with that being said, we're going to start off with frequency separation. This is just a headshot essentially that I took with a prime lens, you know, the Plastic Fantastic on the Canon 7D. It was outside in the backyard where there was a whole bunch of leaves right when spring is starting to bloom and everything is green and nice and luscious and all these things are happening to provide a lot of color. As far as adjustments go, when you're doing frequency separation, this is the first thing that I'm doing. Usually it's like closer to the last thing that I'm doing, but since I'm doing it first, we have to understand what frequency separation does. Now, for those of you who don't know what frequency separation is, I have another video on my channel for you to actually check that out and actually find out how to do it. It's pretty neat. It's probably one of the most popular techniques when it comes to glamour and beauty and touching up skin. All right, so when you're thinking about frequency separation, what you're literally doing is blurring certain parts of the image and sharpening other parts of the image. And what this does is this allows you as the artist to control what you want sharp and control what you want blurred. That's kind of how the whole world of photography is, control of what you see. You know, so when you're out in the field, you're controlling how much light of this you see, you're controlling how much light of that you see. And like in post-production, you're controlling the blur versus sharpness ratio. And this is a good thing for artists because we can control what really pops to our viewers and this will make our work stand out because why we have control over every single thing. And that's really what this entire video is about. So when you look at frequency separation, you can sharpen certain parts and blur certain parts. So with that being said, not only can you blur the facial features to get them nice and consistent with the tones, but you can also um, you know, sharpen other features by erasing the blur on other parts. So you're basically putting a whole blur on the image and then you're erasing the parts that are not needed to be blurred and they become sharp again while the other parts that don't need to be sharp are now blurred and you can control that ratio however you want to. Now the reason frequency separation is so important when it comes to local versus global adjustments is that you have control. You have that control. So with that being said, try to make it as realistic as possible when you're doing this. In this specific image what we're doing is I see her hair. I see that she has a dash of uh, this reddish pinkish hue in her hair that she put in there. She has tattoos that had color that wouldn't have color elsewhere. Or, or another on another person so these are some of the things to think about when you're doing frequency separation and you're doing local versus global adjustments in general think about what your subject has that no other subject has and even if you're doing this with something else that's not necessarily a human you could be doing this with some kind of you know still life image or something like a you know like a picture of a ring or something like that you could be doing frequency separation on anything it doesn't ne necessarily have to be humans so that's something to think about as well you can control the blur versus sharpness ratio with more than just an image like this but for this specific image we want to know what makes this individual unique what makes this individual or this image so unique and this is really what I like to do when I capitalize on my images this is some of my techniques is I like to you know blur and sharpen things based off of what's important as we finish up our frequency separation we want to go through it and make sure that we have a nice ratio of blur to sharpness and making sure we understand what we're doing while we're doing it. with this image like i said local versus global adjustments we're finding the parts that are most interesting and in making them sharper we're finding the less interesting parts or the parts that need to be smooth and consistent and using our separation blur to actually blur them and make them nice and consistent so it's easy on the eyes and what needs impact has the most impact but once again, as we finish up our frequency separation, we do this not only in post, but we do this actually in the field when we have those shadow depth the field lenses, you know, the 1.8s and our 1.2s and our 1.4s, the prime lenses that we use for portrait photography mainly because we do the same thing by blurring the background. We control what people see. Okay, so we jumped out of Photoshop, Photoshop, and we're going to Lightroom. This is a part of the uh, Creative Cloud. This is 2016 version or 2017 version, but you can use pretty much whatever Lightroom that you want to. Now what we're going to do is go back to the toning of the image. We're going to 
see where the dark tones of my face we're gonna go back and darken it up because you know sometimes this frequency separation will blur a lot and lighten up tones that don't need to be lightened up so i'm going to you know darken spots under her chin where the contours of her chin where the shadows were supposed to come in i'm going to darken it and burn it just a little bit more and make it look a lot more realistic just like makeup would do guys we do things like this all the time but people always make excuses or try to make it seem like oh my goodness they're too brushed, and yes, there are people that are too brushed, but at the same time, these lenses and these cameras that we're using are really revealing stuff. We got 24 megapixels, you know, uh, we got 18 megapixel sensors with, you know, extremely sharp lenses, and then we got 50 megapixels with extremely sharp Zeiss Otis lenses and Canon lenses and Nikon lenses that show every little detail, and people just don't want to see that about themselves. It's going to make them way too self-conscious. Even people with makeup still show things that are, you know, just imperfections in their skins, and people don't want to see that, especially the ladies who want to make sure they look as youthful and as, you know, perfect as possible. So it is a common respect, especially if somebody is being, you know, taken a portrait of by you with your expensive camera gear to control everything locally and globally. It's just common respect, and it also will amplify your work now we're back in lightroom i'm just going to finish it off you know polishing things making sure that our raw image because we shot it raw has the color in just the right places not just arbitrarily amping up saturation or not just arbitrarily amping up just one slider no we want to accurately place all our color adjustments and amplify exactly what we need so we can have some of the best work that we possibly can have and that's pretty much it, guys. Now, for those of you who don't know, everybody was like, oh, you're probably shooting with a full frame 5D or 6D or or D5 or 5D Mark IV. Or, no, I'm actually shooting with an 18 megapixel Canon 7D with a Plastic Fantastic. It's pretty much a $500 setup, you know, $100 for the lens, maybe $400 for the body, depending on who you bought it from. So with that being said, it's not even a studio camera, guys. It's a sports camera. But like the old saying goes, the best camera you have is the one you have with you or the best camera to have is the one you have with you. So with that being said, I'm definitely with Sensory Effect Studios and guys, I just encourage you local versus global adjustments. Yes, there are times for global adjustments, but there's more than enough time for local adjustments because those are the, the small things that will get your work.